Take a look around any technician's toolbox or work area and you're going to find a lot of specialty tools and diagnostic equipment, some of which can be rather expensive. But how good would it be for the professional technician if he could combine the three most potent diagnostic tools into one? I have a suggestion for you, a tool offered by a global leader in diagnostic equipment the Launch X431 Torque 5. The Launch X431 Torque 5 is a highly capable scan tool featuring bi-directional controls and all the other important features that you've come to expect from the Launch X431 series. But it's more than that. The module also contains a high quality digital oscilloscope and a full function digital multimeter. Let's take a look at all this tool has to offer, starting with the base platform. The Launch X431 Torque 5 features a rugged 10.1 inch Android tablet running on Android 10.0 with four gigabytes of RAM and a huge 128 gigabytes of storage. Wireless communication between the tool and the VCI make it easy to be wherever you need to be on the vehicle to perform your testing whether it's using the scan tool, the multimeter, or the scope. But the real heart of the tool is the industry-first DBS CAR9 VCI, or Vehicle Communications Interface. In addition to being the scan tool interface, it also houses a powerful two-channel DSO with a 10 megahertz bandwidth and a real-time sample rate of 100 million samples per second. It also houses the full-function digital multimeter, featuring a DC and AC test range of plus or minus 600 volts and an ammeter with a plus or minus 10 amp capacity. Included is a pair of BNC scope leads, multimeter test probes and alligator clips, and an assortment of back probe pins making any measurement you need to take a breeze. Now let's put the tool to work. When you're doing any kind of electrical or drivability diagnosis, one of the first things you should do is check the condition of the battery. Let's use the multimeter function of the Torque 5 to get a real quick test done and get an idea of just how healthy the battery in this vehicle really is. First, select the multimeter option on the tablet's home screen. When the app opens, you'll see that the multimeter has all the features you'd expect of a DVOM. For now, I want to use the voltmeter function. On the DBS CAR9, you'll also see the same connections as you would see on any other multimeter. Black is the common and is used for all measurements. The other three are amps, milliamps, and everything else, voltage, resistance, diode testing, and more. For this test, I'll connect a red test lead to the volt ohm port, and using one of the supplied alligator clips, I'll connect the other end to the battery positive post. Next, I'll connect the black lead to the COM port, and I'll connect the other end to the battery's negative post. The tool offers different viewing modes numerical, waveform, or a combination of the two. I'll select numerical for this test. The voltage reading you see is open circuit voltage, or OCV. That value can also be used to gauge the state of charge of the battery. I'd like to see at least 12.5 volts here. The next step of my test is to start the engine let it run for a minute or so, and then shut it down. Note now that the maximum and minimum values have been updated on the tool's screen. The max value is charging system voltage, and the min value is the battery loaded voltage. As far as loaded voltage is concerned, I don't like to see anything less than 9.6 volts on a conventional lead acid battery, or 10.1 volts on an AGM or EFB type battery. 
And if there's any question about any of the results that I'm getting, well, I can add the Launch BST360 to my diagnostic kit to do a more complete test. The BST360 Bluetooth battery tester will work with the Torque 5 or using an app on any smartphone. Using the tool will provide an even more accurate assessment of the battery. It's a conductance style tester that can provide an accurate assessment of the battery's condition even if the battery isn't fully charged when testing. But wait a minute, we're not quite done yet. Have you ever considered using a scope to test the battery? First, select the scope function from the tool's home screen. You can also open either function from the Torque 5 Scan Tools home screen. Another important feature I want to show you is also part of the Torque 5 home screen. The Launch X431 Torque 5 diagnostic capability can be expanded to include TPMS and Immobilizer Diagnostics and Service, and it's already loaded with a full ADOS software suite. If you're new to using a scope, the Torque 5 scope features a car test menu function. Opening this menu provides you with a selection of test options that will automatically tell you what leads to use and will set up the scope's voltage and time divisions for the test you select. Or you can use what I use, the 2020 rule. I'll use the settings options to select a voltage range that will allow me to trace plus or minus 20 volts. And I'll use the time to set up a 20 millisecond per division time base. Those settings will help you capture just about anything on the vehicle related to the 12 volt systems. It's based on the fact that at those settings, there's enough time on the screen to capture 720 degrees of an engine's revolution at warm idle. Now, in this case, the test I'm going to make is going to be at a cranking speed, which is significantly less than that warm idle speed. So I need to adjust the time base accordingly. Let's set it for 500 milliseconds per division. I'll connect the scope leads to the battery the same way I did using the multimeter. The scope is, after all, just a high-powered digital voltmeter but its capability to graph the readings on a screen and give us a visual representation makes diagnosing or catching intermittents a lot easier. And just as I did before, I'm going to start the engine, allow it to run for a minute or so, and then shut it down. The same basic information we had with the multimeter is also on the scope capture. But I want you to note that because of the speed at which the scope samples, the loaded voltage here is much lower than we saw earlier. That's because this lowest measurement is really not loaded voltage. It's called inrush voltage, and it's that microsecond of time where full demand is being placed on the starter motor. I mean, after all, it has to get itself moving and then get the engine moving, and that's going to be the point of its highest current draw and the highest load on the battery. When assessing a battery based on inrush voltage, look for nothing lower than 8.5 volts. Do you notice something else in this capture? Where are those spikes? Well, let's disable the engine so it won't start and run that test again. Here you can see that the voltage drops are occurring in a rhythmic pattern. These drops are caused by the impact that each cylinder as it approaches top dead center compression has on the working load of the starting motor. If all the cylinders are healthy as they reach that point, it's going to take a lot of effort to get it to turn up and through that compression stroke. And that puts a higher current demand on the starter motor, which in turn creates more of a voltage drain on the battery. And that's what you're seeing in these rhythmic patterns. Now, if there's a cylinder that's not as strong as the rest, well, it won't have as strong an impact, will it? And we can see that by noticing where the voltage drop is not as much as the rest. To be able to see these variations more clearly, we can do two things. First, let's use the AC coupling feature of the scope 
to remove the DC voltage component from the pattern. We'll also adjust the voltage scaling to get an even larger representation. Now with the scope set up, let's perform that test again. When performing this test, I don't really care what the actual voltage reading is. I'm looking for the variations in the drop. So blowing it up like this makes it a little easier to see. But what if we got a pattern like this one? Obviously, one cylinder isn't up to its job and has a major problem. But what cylinder is it? Let's use the second channel to find out. All I have to do is connect it to any of the ignition coils so I can use that signal as a reference. Using my service information system, I've identified the wire on the number four coil that I need to connect to. So I'll use one of the supplied back probe pins to make that connection and connect it to channel two on the scope. The black or ground lead will go to the negative post of the battery, sistered in with channel one's lead. And now we're ready to run the test again and find that weak hole. Here's the capture. The trigger signal is clearly visible and lines up with a good voltage drop. The firing order on this engine is 1873-6542. Since I'm on coil four, it's a simple matter of following the firing order to that drop that's missing and identify it as cylinder number six. This has been a brief introduction into the Launch X431 Torque 5 a multifunction tool featuring a scan tool, scope, and multimeter, all in one platform. Add in the additional resources of X431 FIX, powered by motor information systems, and Code Assist, powered by Identifix, and you'll have all the resources you need in the palm of your hand. So if you're in the market for a new scan tool, considering adding the Launch X431 Torque 5 Diagnostic Tool to your toolbox. For more information, visit www.launchtechusa.com.